the first kind of timing chain controlling device is what they call a link belt. As the name implies, it is just a bunch of links pinned together as a chain, and it runs around on a sprocket and a set of teeth here and here. The problem with link belts is that they generate a lot of heat and cause a lot of drag. And they're okay for a daily driver application, but as we start being concerned with performance, that heat and that drag is gonna become an issue. The next step above a link belt is what they call a roller chain. And this looks just like your bicycle chain, your go-kart chain, your dirt bike chain. It's got little pins and axles, and the links have a little captive bearing, and they allow that thing to spin freely, and there's a lot less drag on a roller chain. They come in single and double, and for a lot of your street applications, and high mild to high performance applications, a double roller chain is going to be the way to go. The second option we have is a gear drive. As the name implies, it uses gears. Now the problem with these is sometimes they can transfer the harmonics from the crankshaft into the valve train. I know Smokey Eunuch did a lot of testing with these things, trying to find the right harmonics, and he would find that sometimes the vibration would transfer into the camshaft, and he was trying to find the sweet spot. That's a little history lesson for you. What you need to know is that sometimes the block needs to be modified for these to fit on there. They come in two styles. It's a dog bone style or an idler style. The dog bone style tends to just kind of ride in between the top and the lower gear. They can make a lot of noise. They take a special front cover that may or may not work with your accessories, so you need to be sure and check that. Uh, the benefits are, though, they don't move. They're very rigid, and they will do what you need them to do as far as keeping the timing intact, except when you get in the high RPMs, maybe with a little bit of mechanical fluctuation. Like I said, they do transfer the resonance and the harmonics from the crankshaft into the cam. That could be an issue, but for the most part, in a higher application, higher RPM application, rather, that's a good choice. The third style is going to be a timing belt. As the name implies, it uses a rubber belt. Now, a lot of people say, hey, they're going to stretch. Let me remind everybody that the OEMs have been using them for hundreds of thousands of miles and have had pretty good luck. Uh, one of the drawbacks of a belt system is the expense. They are a little bit more expensive. You do maybe have to machine the block to fit. We often see them uh, in higher end race applications, higher RPM applications, NASCAR, Pro Stock, things like that. Um, when they come in two styles, one's a tension fit, one has an idler pulley. And now on the tension fit, they did extensive testing in belt harmonics to try and see where the sweet spots were when they resonate, and they'll actually fit and they've tuned them like guitar strings. Uh, very precise, very accurate, really good for racing. So there you have it. There's your top three methods of controlling the timing between the crankshaft and the camshaft. Questions or suggestions, leave them below. As always, like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, call the tech line.